Um, but good morning, guys. As it says on the screen, my name is Caitlin Stipes. I am a sophomore at Churchville Chilai, and I have been coming to youth group here at Calvary for about three years now. A huge part of my life was growing up, we would spend every weekend camping at my campground right on Lake Ontario. And that's where I met my best friend, Mia. And I remember one summer in particular, I was probably seven, and we were painting rocks down by the beach. And I said, Mia, promise me you will guard my rock while I'm at dinner. And she was like, sure, whatever, and like promised me that she would keep my rock safe, which was a big deal to seven-year-old me. Um, so I went to dinner, and when I came back, my rock was gone. And I was so mad that Mia had broken her promise to me. It's still, to this day, the biggest fight we've ever had. So we're going strong. It's okay. Um, but we're going to look at three promises God makes to us. And unlike Mia's promise to me, God's promises are true and steadfast. And so we can lean into those because he will always hold up his end of the bargain. So in Zechariah 2, verses 1 through 5, it says, When I looked again, I saw a man with a measuring line in his hand. Where are you going, I asked. He replied, I am going to measure Jerusalem to see how wide and how long it is. Then the angel who was with me went to meet a second angel who was coming toward him. The other angel said, hurry and say to that young man, Jerusalem will someday be so full of people and livestock that there won't be room enough for everyone. Many will live outside the city walls. Then I myself will be a protective wall of fire around Jerusalem, says the Lord, and I will be the glory inside the city. So God makes three promises to us in that passage. He promises prosperity, protection, and his presence to be there with us. He says that someday Jerusalem is going to be so full of people that, like, the city walls can't even hold them in. So the people had built these city walls and were praying, like, God, help us to fill our city and have enough people to fill these walls. But God looked at that and said, no, I'm not just going to fill your city. I'm going to overflow your city. He's going to bless us and in our situations with so many things that these walls that we built up get knocked down. So many times we unintentionally put God in a box of what we say he can and can't do. And so we say, yeah, God can like heal my relationship with one person, but it's never going to go 100% back to normal. And that's false because God is going to overwhelm those walls that we built up. Psalm 23.5 says my cup overflows with blessings. And so in every season and situation of our life, we can trust that God is blessing us beyond what we could ever imagine. He also promises protection, though, that while he's blessing us, he's not going to leave us to fend for ourselves. Well, he's providing with what we need, even though we might not always know it. He's not going to leave us then to fight our own battles. He's going to go before us and fight those battles for us. That he is going to be the protective wall of fire around our situations and around our cities and our relationships with people. He also promises, though, that he's going to be the glory in all of that. That while he's blessing us and protecting us, he's not doing it for us to be happy and for, to please us. He's doing it to give us the opportunity to praise and glorify him and to honor him. And so when God is the glory inside the city, he's physically there. His presence is there with those people. And so if you've ever been in the presence of God, you know how life-changing that is. You know that chains break when you're in the presence of God. Hearts are restored. Relationships are healed. Situations are completely changed in the presence of God. And so we can rest in those promises that he has for us because his presence brings peace. His presence brings healing. His presence brings joy. And so we can rest and trust in those promises. Um, for me, a year ago, we found out that we'd be hosting a foreign exchange student from the Czech Republic. And this was so nerve-wracking to me, having someone come and live in my house who doesn't speak English as their first language, who's going to then meet all of my friends, and what if my friends like her more than me? I was, <laughs> I was so nervous. And I'm a planner person, so change really doesn't sit well with me to the point where I don't really like to change my toothpaste because that's, that's a lot for me to handle. Um, so having another person come and live in my house was a big deal. And so normally I'd be so overwhelmed with the sense of worry and just fear, but instead I had peace. And there's no way to explain it except for God physically being there and putting his presence into my heart and giving me his peace. And so I know that we all have probably been in situations where we see him blessing us and we see him protecting us and giving us his presence. But I just want to point out that it says Jerusalem will someday. It doesn't say Jerusalem will tomorrow be so full of people. 
because so many times we want to put God on our own timeline. And so even though my situation with the foreign exchange student didn't end up how I thought it would, I have no doubt that eventually it's going to bring prosperity and that God was protecting me in that and that he, his presence was there in that situation. And so together, we can all find joy in that and we can find peace and just happiness in his presence and his promises for us. We don't have to pull away from community because we're scared that God won't provide for us. We can root ourselves deeper into community because we know God will provide. We know he's going to protect us and we know he's going to be there with us. And so together, I just encourage you all to really dig deeper into community because we can rest in those promises that he has for us. Thank you.